Yo guys, and welcome to the second half of the 1974 Grand Torino Elite Fly and Drive from Vegas back to Pennsylvania. If you haven't seen the first part, I'll drop a link to it down below or up here if you want to check that out. But we basically flew out, bought this thing sight unseen, got it running, started working some kinks out. And in this second half, it's game on as we set out on our 2,500 mile trek home. Uh, there's lots of our trip in this and it's a hoot. So will the car make it? I don't know, let's find out. Diving in right now. We're next morning in the hotel parking lot. I'm gonna put the master cylinder in before we go hitting any mountains. Easy repair as long as nothing breaks, like rusted bolts and such. See that's been weeping oil out the back. That's why the fluid kept going down. Probably just rusting the bore like usual and could have maybe honed it to fix it. But once the pitting's there, that oil can weep past the seals. The new one looks identical to the old one, side by side. And then you want to do a push rod measurement. So I don't have a tool for that. Just take a stick, drop it in there until it stops. Put this one sideways like so. We got a little cross. Put it in here. And looks like identical. So no push rod adjustment necessary, which is usually the case. Here's the adjustment in case they're not the same. You then want to take a little lithium grease and rub that on the ball tube. Right, there happened to be a nice lady walking by and I got her to press the brake pedal for me. We're gonna go ahead and bleed, bleed this master cylinder now. Uh, so slowly start depressing the brake pedal down and let me know when it hits the floor. Keep going, keep going. Okay, all right, now let it back up. I'm just covering my fingers over here. I right, go ahead again. Slowly till it gets down to the floor. And let it back up. Alrighty, that should be good. I appreciate it. It's, uh, thank you so much. Enjoy your day. I, if I, you what? Oh, yo, yeah, help me, yeah, yeah. That was really nice of her. I tipped her five bucks too. It's only took a couple pumps, but you know, hey. Now I'm gonna hook these lines back up and it would be a great idea to flush them at this point, but I, I don't wanna make a mess in the hotel parking lot and, oh shoot. Look at that, it's got a different size on the rear. Mm, that's a big problem. Should have checked that. I, I looked at him side by side comparison, but I didn't check the rear fitting. Shoot, only option is off with the new and on with the old. Subtle difference with the holes, but I definitely should have took my finger and stuck it in them and checked that they were the same because otherwise it looks identical. Yeah, that was a waste of time. Uh, we found a master cylinder in stock at a Napa for a 1975 Elite, so I'm hoping that, come on buddy, what are you doing? I'm hoping that's the difference. Maybe. I ended up having the right master cylinder. It's got the bigger 916 hole, some other goodies, some air freshener, good to go. Found a nice tree to park under behind this grocery store where Jen is doing a little shopping. Gus is gonna take a nap and uh, throw this in. Don't have to show you any detail. Let's get it in and we'll flush out the lines. Just let it sit for five minutes with fluid in there till it gravity bled and fluid's coming out of the ports. Let's see if that does it and gives us a pedal. You know what, actually we're gonna go crack the, the lines on each wheel too. Let it gravity bleed that old fluid out. That way we don't pump any of it in, into here. You gotta love the good old fashioned bumper jack. Oh, as long as your bumper's not rusted. Uh, the supports aren't rusted. So easy, I bet you you could do it, Jack. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You just hook it on the bumper? Yeah. So as long as your bumper's not rusted oh. out, then you're good. Now I can get under there and easily get to the front bleed ports. I got the rears gravity bleeding right now. Very cool. Onto some rags. I'll put a bag in this oil pan so we can easily clean it out. This gets the plug, yep. Gus, you gotta, you gotta get out of here. Come here. This has got an oversized drain plug in it. One of those ones that cut new threads. Let's see if I get lucky on this oil filter. Oh, nope. I should, probably should have got a wrench. Oh, how about the hose trick, which I just thought of now. I got Jen up top. We have the hose wrapped around here and we're gonna try to, she's gonna pull it and then 
slowly seat it onto the filter. And now just give it steady pull. Oh, no, I can't get it. Last idea, I got a ratchet strap. She's gonna put this board down and then we use some leverage. Couldn't do this on a modern car. Is that all your weight? That's it, all right, beautiful. Worked good. <laughs> Thank you, that was great. <laughs> Sorry. That was a tight filter. We are keeping that two by four. Definitely gonna come in handy later in the trip, I'm sure. I know it's diesel oil, but Rotella is my favorite. High zinc content, it's good stuff. That's cool. Not yet. Why did the wind have to kick off just as we're doing this? All right, great. I'll buy you any clothes, baby. Coming down. Jen did an awesome job cleaning the windshield. We'll uh, throw some new wipers on. Hopefully the wipers work. The tree's been hit quite a few times by trucks. A moment of truth on these wipers. Look at that. Slow speed and high speed. Perfect. Uh, well, they don't auto retract. For now, that's good. So as far as gauges are our tack, speedometer work, but nothing except for the clock over here uh, seems to be working. Clock's turning. I, I swear the oil pressure was working before and now it's not on. It's a little alarming, but we're not leaking anything. No, good to go. Oh, and let's try out the radio. <laughs> oh we yeah. We are looking forward to your Dodgers tonight. What do you think? Beating the Mets, is that correct? We got our presets. No, that, that's the only value I see. Maybe I was. Gussie, you're not used to this desert heat, are you? <laughs> Look, God, this is horrible. He just had water too. I've been hydrating him nonstop. He needs a bath though. He needs to be hosed down. Look at that. Oil pressure did eventually come up. I don't know, maybe a faulty gauge. This place here, genius idea. It's a bar and laundromat. Getting out of Vegas, finally. I think Gus is ready too. Well, we're not too far outside of town. Just went up a little pass and she started running like turd. Still idling, but Hmm. Now, we could have a restricted fuel pickup for some odd reason or a restriction in the line, but I really don't think that is. I don't know why this pump is not passing fuel. It doesn't make sense unless the carburetor inlet filter is clogged. That's a possibility too. I'm going to take the tank from the line and we're going to check for flow test real quick. I have plenty of flow. Look at that. Let's put it back on real quick. Here, take this gas. We're gonna go pour this back in the tank. Maybe this guy took the fuel cell out of his Mustang for a reason. Maybe he's having some issues with the pickup getting clogged or something. It's still running like the turd, so I'm starting to think maybe something in the car is floating around and clogged the main jet. It's not the inlet filter because I took that off before, blew through it, and that was pre flow. Uh, the bowl's either empty or the main jet's clogged. I just can't believe it ran as good as it did for so long. Look at all that flow. Oh, actually, no, that's pretty crummy. It should be more than that. Let's see what happens when we bring the RPM up. Where is it? Yeah, that's not bad. We're getting flow to the carburetor. 
and look at that we only have a half full bowl so yeah just a fuel delivery problem not not a clogged carb found a problem guys remember this little pre-filter on the carb uh, that i said I, I took off and i blew through and i was like yeah we'll just leave that for now well that is blo uh, blocked up which is so weird because i had this off not long ago one day ago and it was fine uh, luckily i do have the new one for it got it for diesel only right funny it's just so funny like i took this off and checked it the other day and the original one was fine so i was like yeah we'll just keep this as a backup should have flushed out the lines better the fuel the fuel lines that's all there is to it Yeah, look at that, ton of fuel coming out now. At least we know the carb's pretty clean though and no little chunks floating around in there that are gonna give us future problems. Sometimes there's like little chunks of rust in the bottom and you'll go and floor it and one will get sucked into a main jet. I really wish I brought a clear, I, I bought a clear fuel filter. Maybe I did. So we put that on here and, and that way this one doesn't get clogged up. Back on the road, that was fun. Buddy. Okay, buddy, he just smashed your face on the sand. <laughs> Back to work. You little goofball. <laughs> there he goes. He is just loving running around. About to go for a little dip in the lake. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna have to find a better swimming spot tomorrow. I went out like I don't know, 50 feet, and it's still yay. How you doing there, Gus man? You all muddy. Next morning, gonna knock out a few things before we hit the road. Found a mirror in the trunk, clean that up some. And we stayed at the Boulder Beach campground, so it's nice here. The one that came off the glass is starting to go bad and it doesn't have cables. This one's got the adjustment cables, a little bit different shape, nice glass. Knew that was gonna happen. Looks good. Door panel's gotta come off to install the adjustment cable. I'll just leave that for now. Next on the list is verifying the differential oil level. Not really much of any leaks, but always a good idea to check uh, before you go hitting 2,500 miles. Little twig dip, oh, nothing. There it is. Yeah, so we're, we're a little bit low and that's really black and nasty. Next is looking at the climate control. It seems to be stuck on hot. I, I mean, it goes over to cool, but that's as far as it goes for warm. And then this thing is just scorching going down the road like the heat's stuck on. This doesn't feel like it's doing anything. So. Found the problem. I was digging through the spare parts and I found this. Thinking, that looks interesting. And then I look up underneath. And I don't know if you can see it, but where all the vacuum hoses go in, that piece should be mounted right there. I'm going to try to get that on. Fun, fun. With that all back together, it seems to be operating properly. I put it on high, nothing happens till you put vent on. Getting to check out the Hoover Dam. Get all that, buddy. This is the true test. In 65 mile an hour in 100 degree weather. Uh, we'll see how she holds up. <laughs> it is hot. Definitely fix the AC tomorrow. Yeah, this sucks. I'm cooking on this side of the car. It was first time calculating the fuel mileage. We're just filled up in searchlight and 10.27 miles to the gallon. 
Well, that's not good. I'm gonna have to check that carb out, make some tweaks, because I was hoping to get at least like 15. Forget if I showed you guys earlier, but the ATF is right up to level, idling and park hot, and I mean hot, and that's been holding steady. Cooling system's working perfectly too. It hasn't ate a drop, and you see the bypass tank is working perfect all the way up to the hot. Picked up the heater core bypass nipple and a fuel filter to throw in as a pre. Should have done that before. Way too hot to change that out now though, and the system's under pressure. So we'll, uh, we're gonna try just charging the AC system up now. Put two cans in, let's see if this compressor kicks on. Nothing yet. I did hook it back up too. It's weird because it was stuck on before when we originally got the car. But I'm thinking let's just jump 12 volts and let it rip, right? Okay, she's turning. It doesn't sound that healthy, but the low side's getting cool already. A good wax on this thing and it'll shine. Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Oh yeah, we got some, we got some air. Yeah. <laughs> Now we just got to get rid of that. Uh, so I threw one more can in and she's going cold. Ice cold. We just got to get rid of the heat now when, later when it cools down and we'll be good. Welcome to Arizona. Next thing we gotta fix is that rattle over there. I think it's just the sway bar link. We got a nice little spot on the Colorado River here. Just north of Laughlin. What's, what town is this? I guess we're in Bullhead City. Beautiful. $10 a night to stay here. You rent jet skis just down yonder. It's this super dope spot along the river. Water's cold here though, because this this is just after the Davis Dam. So everything's off uh, the bottom of the dam and the water's probably about 55 year round. Stays the same year round. She made it through the desert. Didn't overheat. We were, what is it, 103 today or something? Just blasting away doing 65. You know, we gotta work on the fuel mileage a little bit, but uh, yeah. Time to put the heater bypass nipple in. Yeah, very involved process. And that'll take care of it. I'll just cut these and I'll cut those off at a later time so that we don't damage the heater core nipples. One problem with these, these plastic ones is if you do leave this on here for several years, uh, this Chinese plastic is brittle and can break over time. Using a brass nipple would be a better call. And look how much bigger this beach got. This is fed by a dam, so they must have slowed down the flow. And then we have another, geez, I don't know, 20 feet of beach here. Go ahead, guys, drink some water. Another small issue we have to address is the power steering leak. So the, the pump itself is a little damp, not, not bad. However, the, let's see, the return to cooler, this line, this is the power steering cooler. This one right here on the, the crimp is leaking real bad and we've had to top it off twice already, almost a whole quart it's taken. So I'm gonna call a few places to see if we can get that in the next day. And there's also a stumble at idle when it gets hot, it's starting to kind of do it now. Start with a basic tune-up PCV valve and maybe do a compression check at some point as well. How's that 
say sea bomb, baby. It's blowing cold. This is the first time when I felt pretty good in this car. Got some ice cold AC going. Heck yeah. They don't have this power steering return hose in stock, but I have another idea for fixing that. I'm thinking we'll just cut it at the crimp and then slide another hose over that and replace it because it is leaking pretty bad. Did have to grab one of these power brake check valves for the brake booster because every time you shut the car off, the brakes just the power brakes just immediately go away, which means the valve's leaking. These are just a one-way check valve, so when the brake booster loses vacuum, it keeps the vacuum inside of here. On the old one, I was able to blow, and this one I can't. I can always suck. Once you have it on the hose, you just push her into the grommet. Sometimes those grommets tear too. That's why the kit came with new ones, but this one seems fine. Well, here it is, River Valley Tavern. Jen said she wanted to stop at a dive bar. This fits the bill. Great little spot if you're ever in Bullhead City or down in Needles, River Valley Tavern. You got two classic boards parked next to each other. Awesome little dive bar. This is the one we make you big. Come on up. Oh, I'm oh, oh, talking about once in a while. Is this your kind of place? Yeah. Air conditioning, Anyways, my shady. Kind of place with air conditioning right now. <laughs> you know what the slogan is for this bar? If you take a knee for the national anthem, you're in the wrong damn bar. Cool, cool little spot. Oh look, this is the uh, the local road you take home if you've been boozing and cruising, just take the, the dirt road. <laughs> I'm like, sir, I didn't enter the highway. I was on private property the whole way right back into the trailer park. I figured we had to stop at least one junkyard when we're out here. Mostly newer stuff at this yard. There's a couple crushed cars. Pancaked out. That's a car crusher right there. But I figured I'd still take a little stroll through. It's always fun to visit a, a junkyard when you're in the desert. Heavy duty towing rig, not rusted out either. Unreal. Yeah, the boxes, the hinges are still good on them. But that's got a gasser engine too. <laughs> and that big tow truck, wow. All right, we gotta get back. Jen said I had five minutes to run through the yard. <laughs> they will find another one. Just banged out about an hour drive, had the AC cranking the whole time, and it's 109 out. We just rolled into Lake Havasu City. <laughs> Her and the dog are taking a nap. But yeah, it's great to see that the, the car didn't overheat with the AC on, blasted through the desert. You ready to go in the water? Oh, he, is, uh... <laughs> he won't go. Uh, come on, guys. <laughs> I saw a random black stand-up jet ski out on Lake Havasu. Must be Skinny Mike. Just flagged him down. Hopefully they didn't just flag down a random, random guy. <laughs> you were the only stand-up on the lake. I'm like, it must be him. Black stand-up out there. What's Say up, what's Chris? up to the internet. Welcome to Arizona, what's going? buddy. Heck yeah, Havasu man. Got this Impala wagon, a little cleaner than the one we did a video on a while back. And it's beautiful. I'm saying next time we fly out and do a drive home, we're getting a completely rust-free gem like this. It's got the third row of your seating facing backwards. Ah, it's awesome. This is uh, Mike's truck jacked up. Ended up staying over Mike's last night. We're able to do some laundry, sleep in an air conditioned house, and now we're gonna knock out a few miscellaneous repairs before, well, actually we might spend a couple days in Havasu too, but there'll be long travel days ahead. So replacing these sway bar links because they're just getting more rattly and rattly. I got some right stuff sealant for a few odds and ends, and this front grill has just been super rattly and squeaky. So I'm gonna use some silicone behind that. Wire up the switch for the AC. Uh, so we can turn the pump on and off since I can't figure out why the climate control won't turn it on and off. The sway bar bushings seem completely fine for now. But you see these links, dry rotted rubber, and just getting real. See, I can spin the sleeve. Just rattly over bumps, so easy repair.
Ramcoa, made in USA. It's one side done and two sides done. Pull the AC switch. When you put this on AC, there's a little micro switch right here and the switch is being pressed in. However, it doesn't send power over, so it needs a new micro switch, but for now, we'll just put a manual switch in. And that was easy, just ran some wires to the back of here. And it won't work unless the key's on. And now, perfect. Got full control of the AC compressor now, because you wouldn't want to just wire it up and then forget about it, drain your battery overnight, or burn up the clutch. I'm gonna skip the spark plugs for now. I think it would be a good idea to have a compression gauge handy when we do that. We can see the health of the motor. And plus, uh, Mike's friends just rolled up with a couple of boats. Just a little warmer than the river or what? Much warmer. Nice. Bring the throttle up and it will just die. That's only a two banger right now. And it's running surprisingly slow on two cylinders. Right at this buoy line we're at no wake. So bring her up as fast as you can possibly get it going. You guys heard it wanted to bog out there a little bit, but if he slowly rolls it, he can get it up to maybe, what is it, like eight knots or something? All right, so that's maxed out. All right, now we're gonna give it the, the double NKH boost. I saw I was working kind of manual finger choke there and got it to rev up some it definitely had some carburetor issues I was like wait a second <laughs> a little cruise under the London Bridge. You guys probably already know this, but here in Lake Havasu City, this is the attraction, the man-made canal they put in and transported this bridge from London block by block and rebuilt it here. Pretty neat. Cruise now to Havasu today. We got 230 miles to the Grand Canyon where it will be a little cooler, hopefully in the 80s. It's triple digits here. Ken, you put your hand out the window, it feels like an air fryer. It's Unless you wet yourself, you're just cooking. Gonna leave the AC off for now. 
see what kind of mileage we get in the first. Yeah, we'll go 100 miles. First time cruising the Grand Torino. What do you think? How's she drive? She drives great. Handles these bumps, no problem. Get your kicks on Route 66. Well, it goes from St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri. Oh, we stopped in Kingman. Gonna take a walk through this junkyard. Check out the Lincoln right there. Woohoo! We can find anything cool in this yard, maybe. Dan's Auto Salvage. Wow, this is a little different than our junk car. Look at all these axles. Oh man, you can just leave stuff out in the desert and it lasts. Here's a Thunderbird, pretty much the same car that we're cruising right now. Two door, just really the same deal. Yeah, a lot of these parts would probably cross. Crossover. Box body up top there. Whatever bus this is. There you go, babe. You want a new toy for uh, for Gus? Oh, that scared me. Yeah, it scared me when I grabbed it. It's actually nice quality, in great shape. See, this would be all just full of mold back home. Could spend days and days here. Beautiful. All the bell housings organized, all the pulleys, all the bumpers and fenders, exhaust headers, intake manifolds, more headers, doors. It's just so awesome how organized they have this. Yeah, we can get back in through here, but. Is this the right way? How we came? Yeah. Tons of carburetors. I'm six foot three. That's me on my tippy toes. This thing is massive. Can you imagine he's pumping? Finally got a chance to do an accurate measurement of our fuel consumption on the highway we found that we actually have a seven percent uh, difference in what this indicates over actual miles miles we did so out of 182 actual miles we got uh 13.86 gallons and 13.2 miles to the gallon that was doing 70 75 the whole way and uh, that's not bad maybe we'll try and work on that from here get her up to like 17 probably 18 on back roads This is actually petrified wood. You see this, babe? Well, Gus, you get to see the Grand Canyon. Your first time ever. What do you think of all that? I'll put the trim back on this gas cap lid. Nothing. 
nothing but the right stuff. Too much or too little? Guess we'll find out. Jeez, babe. Working over here. Sorry. You didn't want me to get the duct tape at the store. Shh, don't tell them that. Ugh. What happened? That was a moth. This power steering leak's gotten real bad. It's filling up the frame, dripping in two spots now. And that's just after being parked here for oh, 10 minutes. Just soaked down. Let's take care of that. Picked up this little mini Lyle cutter and uh, just cleaned off this steel part of the hose. Think that'll cut right. Yeah, plenty of space down there for that. And plastic cutter works great. And that's fixed. Gates, transmission cooler hose, rated at 400 PSI. Hose clamped on. This is not the pressure side of the pump, so should be fine. Good morning. The dust puppy. You hit him and he's just covered in dust now. It's me again to interrupt you guys. I did want to take a quick minute and thank a sponsor of this channel, Blaster, for helping make videos like this possible. Two things, we got a little giveaway and I also want to mention their Multimax lubricant. We used the heck out of this stuff on the trip. Super convenient, you know, it's the premium synthetic multi-use lubricant that displaces moisture, stops squeaks, protects against corrosion, long lasting lubrication and it's odorless. It's really just an all in one and of course it comes with their Pro Straw on the top. So check these guys out if you don't already use Blaster products. I highly suggest checking them out, especially since they support creators like myself. And you might see me use another brand here or there, but that's only because that's what's at hand. I try to always use Blaster and I really do appreciate uh, what they do for the channel. Second part of this is a little giveaway. Uh, so giving away three shirts, quite a few guys, uh, you guys were asking where did I get this shirt? I don't think they sell them anywhere. So if you want one, just drop a comment down below, any old comment, you gotta be in the USA and I will pick three random people to send a shirt and I'll try and get them to send you a can of the Multimax lubricant to you as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump back into the video. Back on the road, next stop is Page, Arizona, 133 miles away. So we just stalled out, not sure exactly why. Well, we could roll back to that spot there. Why don't you do that? I'll just walk. It's dangerous. Nope, just go. Oh, he made it. Oh, thank God. That was scary. Can you take the dog? We're safe, yeah. That was stressful. Yeah, a little bit. All right, let's go figure out what the deal is. Luckily, we broke down on a hill, so it's no big deal. Rolled right back down to, to this oh spot. God. It seemed like just a fuel issue again, so that's, that's where we're going to start. Just kind of lost power and died out on us. I mean, this is the highest elevation we've been. The bowl's empty, got... Nothing coming out of the pumpers. If this thing is clogged up again, I'm gonna be kind of mad. No, it's not. All right, crank it. And we got nothing coming out. All right, we got no fuel flow. I'm thinking we got a case of vapor lock in the fuel lines and that's why the pump's not pumping fuel. So I'm gonna try pressurizing the tank like we did before while Jen cranks it and get fuel prime again. And got her fired back up, that's all it took. I, I pulled the vent hose out of this hole, I have it rounded at the bottom, 
blew in it real hard, pressurized the tank, and we were able to get uh, fuel prime again. So I guess with us shutting it off at this high altitude, you know, the boiling point's less up here too. All the, the gas vaporized in the lines, the pump couldn't do its job and, and fill up the carburetor. See, now we're flowing plenty. I bet you if I leave this sitting here idling for a little bit, you'll see this get all bubbly and start boiling. There it is, you see that? The gas is vaporizing inside the fuel filter because it's just so hot in there so if you shut this off and let it sit maybe you'll have to do something different with the browning of the the fuel line yep there it is that's what vapor lock looks like you saw that for a second and then finally the gas kicked back in but when i shut it off at the top of the hill here that's exactly what happened we sat here for 10 15 minutes and it uh vaporized all the fuel in the lines we'll have to maybe address that vapor lock issue in the future Get your own smoke bone. Splinter free. Look at that. Oh, that'll keep you busy. We're over at uh, Big John's Barbecue in Page, Arizona. Get your own feet in there too. Yeah, you're kind of camping or what? You just off the leash, run around, do whatever you want? Yeah. <laughs> the drone's not even on with the wind. Now that would be cool if you could charge your drone batteries like that. <laughs> I can help you, baby. Look at this thing going. Getting that morning workout. Big sea pill. Come on, boy. Good. fill up with premium because I've never seen 50 cents less for premium. 498 for regular, 449 for 91. Premium it is. Even though the vapor lock has only given me a serious problem once, we're gonna go ahead and address it. You can see sitting here idling, how that fuel's boiling in there. And then when we shut it off, it continues boiling, which causes high pressure in the fuel line since there's a check valve on the fuel pump, not allowing it to go back that way. And then that pushes past the needle with the high pressure, overfills the bowl, and then causes hot soak, I think it's called. So what we have is this little filter, and this will go in place of the clear filter where it has a third nipple, and that's gonna be a return back to the fuel tank. There's a little orifice in there, so it's not a full flow port, but uh, that's gonna allow that, that boiling fuel to not pressurize the hose and it'll make its way back to the tank. I'll do that later though when it's not triple digits and the engine's cooled down. All right, Gus, you're gonna get to go in four states at once. And Jen's first time too. He goes on the hot pavement. Uh, <laughs> How hot is it? Hot. Yeah, way too hot. All right. Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. I had to pull over here at Belt Salvage. Check out this crankshaft. <laughs> what the heck is that out of? Tithing gear has got five rows to it. I was just talking to one of the employees. He said this weighs 13,000 pounds. It was one of four they had. The other ones went to Saudi Arabia to, to be recommissioned. It's actually out of a natural gas compressor. Just kind of taking a quick stroll through the yard too. All this stuff is sold by the pound. 
So if you find something useful you want, and uh, it's all anywhere from, starts at 25 cents a pound, he said. What is this, a Mac or a Kenworth? Mack truck, a wood stove graveyard, helicopter frame up here, totally stripped. Get to the chopper! Oh, the thing's barely teeter in there too. <laughs> We banged out 260 trouble-free miles today. Stopped at Carver Brewing in Durango, Colorado. We'll grab a bite to eat and then maybe a beer. It's gotta be. Oh, I wouldn't step in that. <laughs> Come out of there. That could be scorching hot at any point. With this natural spring on the side of the road here. Why is this on my feet? <laughs> what did I just step in? Probably all sorts of like arsenic and iron. Oh yeah, it's warm. Nice. You're stirring up some sludge there. Oh. All right, and we're. <laughs> Rusty. Ready? Go. <laughs> Come on, boy. He really loves that. Oh. I guess it's probably about 50 feet or so. Whoa. Way to go! Yeah, my Woo. It's cold. Thank you. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. <laughs> Let's, Let's go get to Silverton. Let's get gas. Yeah, it's stalled out. Oh, good spot though. Look at that. I think we just ran out of gas. Let's find out. I guess we'll throw five gallons in. We got our evap hose hooked up. Well, Jen asked a good question. Why don't I just take the cap off and see if it's out of fuel instead of adding five gallons? And you can't, so because there's like a foam blocks in there. And, and let me see if I can show you guys. There we go. There's the foam blocks. But I just pushed this down to the hose, uh, bottom, blew on it, and there's nothing. So yeah, we ran out, and now we get to find out how many gallons this actually is. We put in exactly five gallons. Now we roll downhill to the gas station. Okay, I guess let's see if it starts back up. And yes, Jen did say we should stop at the last gas station, but I, I figured we'd make it. I mean, we actually would have made it. We definitely could have rolled into town from here. If you don't believe me... Uh, we're gonna test my theory. I put it in neutral, shut it off. We're gonna see if we can actually roll into a station. We don't know where it is, but I'm sure there's one in town. The no power brakes feel completely fine. See the one way? Oh, okay, we're going in the one way. Oh my god! Told you! We made it! No gas needed. Yeah, I get it. We got, uh, 8.6 gallons, so it's roughly a 13, 14 gallon tank. And then top off the emergency fuel. Kind of wish we didn't even pull this out. Definitely could have rolled down the whole hill as you saw, but uh, that, that's risky business. To Silverton. I'm gonna go hit the Big Block Brewery. It's actually called that Big Block Brewery. Yeah. But we have a small block, a little block. What's that? <laughs> Don't we have a little block? <laughs> Small block, yeah. What is it though? I forget. 351 Cleveland. 351 Cleveland. <laughs> That's right! How'd you get that? Because you told me. Oh. oh okay, golden block, not big block. <laughs> not big block. 
Next morning, we're back on the road. We ended up camping just outside of Silverton, up at 11,000 feet off of Forest Road, and uh, Jen got some altitude sickness, and so did Gus. He was actually, he got diarrhea and vomiting, and he was just in bad shape. So as soon as we came down, though, they, they both felt better. Now we're eastbound toward Kansas City to go visit Dalton from Pole Barn Garage. He's a wet pups. You gonna go roll in the dirt now? Chewing the sap off your paws, huh? Let's see it. Oh, look at you, you made a mess. You got the sticky paws. I forget where we left off with this, but I have the vapor lock system now installed. This line runs over, which would normally go to the charcoal canister, but I use that hard line to run it back to the fuel tank. So now when the fuel boils in here, it has that little restricted port to vent those vapors back to the tank, and hopefully it solves our issues because coming over some of these mountain passes, uh, we, we had two other cases of vapor lock where we're coming up high, I stopped for a minute, even leaving an idling, and then I started up the hill again, and maybe 300 feet later it'll shut off, and luckily then we knew how to address the issue and get going again, but let's see if this takes care of it. Well, this is a nice spot to hang out for a little bit, have lunch, storm's kind of rolling in from, from that way, and we are now on our way to Kansas City. get cruising on the highway let's just look at this filter right that's completely full of fuel and this line going back to the tank is allowing a steady trickle of gas back in the tank I think you can hear that so oh, it's like a return system now in the Rio Grande, eastbound and down. Bet your car don't have one of these. Oh. That's some 70s tech right there. Woo! we're gonna hit before Kansas we just climbed up to 9600 feet so I'm gonna turn her off we had the AC on too we'll see if that's boiling curious if it vapor locks again if it doesn't then this definitely cured the problem because it was it was clockwork doing it uh, with all the other ones you see we're boiling in the fuel filter which is probably coming up from the mechanical pump mounted on the block since that's very hot but that should all be coming back out this but I can Oh, I can't hear it. Let's go check the tank. You can actually, if you listen closely, you can hear it trickling into there too. And five minutes later, you see that's still boiling. Gus has done his piss break. So let's let's see what happens. Ooh. Well, it started easier that time, but the starter sounded really bad. Well, let's see if it's if it vapor locks or not. No, it 
hasn't yet. Let's get on down the road. No, no vapor lock. Okay, good stuff. So that fixed the problem. Although, I don't know if you guys heard that starter, but that sounded really bad when I started at that time. We'll take a look at that later, I guess. We are heading into Kansas tonight, and it is windy out. Oh, seems like Ended up staying at the Wakini, Kansas KOA, cute little campground. Had to make a quick air fuel ratio adjustment for the idle since we're down around 2,000 feet now and it wouldn't even idle installed coming in here. gas stations out here have the option for ethanol free gas it's 519 versus 469 but if you're putting that in a lawnmower or a boat that's going to be in storage definitely the way to go but no premium here though there is no swirling thing no he can go either. from on his belly doesn't it look swirly on his knee we're going through the flint hills and this car is getting kind of blown all over the place we could definitely use some shocks constantly. I feel like we're a bobblehead going down the road. Well, Gus was being awfully quiet down there by my feet and I didn't notice what he was doing and he went to town on this carpet. Shoot a little hole. So I told Chris I would just glue it back together. I'm like, it's okay. made it just south of Kansas City to Pole Barn Garage. We're here with Dalton. If you guys haven't seen his channel, definitely check it out. I'll drop a drop a link below, but what's up, man? It's good to meet you here, finally. Yeah, absolutely, dude. So, uh, Gus is down here chewing his bone, and let's take a quick tour, see what kind of projects Dalton's got going. Well, there's always the holy goat. If you guys haven't seen the holy goat, <laughs> I mean, I know you have if you were watching this video, but seeing it in person, Holy smokes, this thing is just rad. Oh, man. And uh, he has challenged the elite in a race. I, I don't know. I mean, you got the you got the 400 in here. That's the weight advantage. He's got his daily driver 75 Corvette. Clean looking Stingray. Beautiful. So this is the official pole barn garage now? Or what? This, this is, is the official pole barn. This is where the sausage is made. The 69 Plymouth Roadrunner. It's been rolled and burned, therefore it is the rolled runner. And uh, this is a 440 for it. You got to have a motorhome, right? Yep. Oh man. And uh, it's got a it's got a lot of things I'm real proud of. I mean, it looks on. like you. Oh wow, <laughs> that's some clean work, though. Oh, yeah. Compared to what this looked like originally. It is a lot better. This is this is coming together. The door almost closes. Oh man, I love it, dude. <laughs> Poor dogs being subjected to all this. <laughs> Oh, it has 
looking over your window. I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> These bullet holes really do work good for ventilation too. Like we're yeah, they're good. We're barely uh barely moving. I can already feel the airflow. with the 351 Cleveland, we got it. All right, we'll see who's gonna take it. After the, after you took off. That's funny. How'd that feel? Pretty good. It always feels good to win, you know. <laughs> what are you using wood glue there? <laughs> <laughs> no, good stuff actually. Oh, Ceramic. Yeah. All right, three in one polish and coat. Wow. Any good ideas for getting this uh, oh, sap baby. off of here? Look at that. Oh my god. Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> this car would come back, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it really, it needs a top, of course, but. Yeah, but, dude, that would shine. Yeah, <laughs> it really would. Is it going to look like that when it dries? This could yeah, be your new daily yeah. driver. Her Civic's <laughs> been giving her problems. This could be 19 miles to the gallon with a tornado behind you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You picked the best time to get a car that gets 12 miles to the gallon. I know, right? <laughs> oh, dude, it's been killer. Getting in the Holy Goat. Don't forget to latch your door, baby. Oh. I don't know what that seat's too so uh. All right. Okay. So you got to turn on the lightning. <laughs> and then you push the thunder. The thunder. Push the thunder. For how long? Press the gas pedal, babe. Do it again? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you gotta turn on the wind. The wind? Yeah. All right. Woo! Yeah! How was your holy goat experience? <laughs> it was holy. <laughs> so the pole barn garage is kind of a, a convenient little middle of the country pit stop. And we're gonna try, well, we got the starter motor here, but we're gonna pull the old one out and see, you guys heard the terrible noise it was making. 
I'm guessing this little bushing up here is maybe fell out of place or worn out. I'm not sure, but let's pull the old one out and see what's up. Looks like a brand new starter, go figure. That's why it's shot. <laughs> He's doing a quick side-by-side. -side. Looks very similar, but the flange is thicker on this one. On the new one, we got threads. Uh, I'll just try to jam her in there. Uh, let's see what was making noise. The bushing looks fine. Probably a Bendex or, oh, no, oh, there it is. Chip in the tooth. See that? Or missing a tooth, should I say. Yeah, it looks like it might work. So, I mean, I counted the teeth. Those, those are the same. Nice and crooked. Oh, that's a short bit, you can. <laughs> what kind of bit did you give me? Look, look, look I tried you... to bird something a little hard, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Am I gonna have to get you another bit? <laughs> that's how a bit's supposed to work. Yeah. Let's give that new starter a crank then. See how she sounds. Sounds good. I didn't like that sound. What kind of Chinese starter is that? <laughs> Was it the fan maybe? Because it's jacked up weird? No, I don't think so. I think car flexed and it was hitting the fan trap. That did not sound good, so let's take it back out, do another look, see edit. I'm now just kind of doing a second uh, comparison, and we can see where it was hitting. Right here on the aluminum. So a flex plate was definitely rub rubbing that, and uh, I guess a couple options at this point. I mean, there's no wiggle room once it's in there. Only well, goes in one way, so we could maybe just swap this gear over to the old one. All right, give that a crank. Much better. All right, that's fine. Sounds good. That's all it was. Just took the double carbide to it, clearance it, and it sounds good. Give it one more crank. Let's just hear that. Beautiful. All right, hey, don't chip that one. <laughs> all right. We ended up camping at Powell's Creekside Haven, uh, just maybe like 15 minutes from Dalton. And we might stay here again tonight. It's a really cute little place, uh, super reasonable prices, and we could stay in the, Jen, Jen wants to stay in the box. <laughs> Gonna bang out a few more odds and ends while we're still in Missouri, over at the Pole Barn Garage. I got a brake shim kit, because I don't think I showed it in the video, but I did get another rattle after the sway bar links. That fixed one noise and then another brake noise. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I was saying the sway bar links fixed her one noise, but then going over bumps, I was hearing a rattle. I went under here, grabbed the brake hose, and I hear this. Uh, I pulled the shims out, which are supposed to look um, concave, like so, a little spring, and I bent it back, it went away from maybe 100 miles, but you just pull this little Allen out and put a new shim in, and that should take care of the noise. Yeah, I can grab that and rock it back and forth. You shouldn't be able to do that. I can get some channel locks on there. Oh, well, hopefully good channel locks that don't slip like that. And grab it. Of course, I, oh man, these are, these are slipping right off the groove, huh? Look at this. Well, Harbor Freight's finest. I snug down this nut. Of course I did put, there we go. Put Loctite on this when I put it together. I'm taking the taking part in the parking lot. Once you take this bolt out, you can just hammer, or in this case, slide the whole piece out. There it is. It goes in like so. You see the whole caliper dropped, and without that, well, this is all that holds it in. And this, you know, spring we'll call it. I'm calling it a shim, but it's like a spring shim. Shouldn't be flat like that. So I bent this back. Noise went away, but now we're gonna put the new one in. Lube it up with some silicone brake lube. And I suppose replace this other little shim in here too. Let's see where that goes. And it just goes right down on the bottom of the pad. Take the old one off, throw the new one on, and I'll put these back together. I'll 
put some red Loctite on that bolt. You know, since it's the only bolt holding the caliper on. And now no more noise on that caliper. So no more rattles over bumps. Good to go. I'm gonna hit all the grease fittings while I'm here too. That's what's nice about these old cars. Every joint is greasable. Sometimes they're missing though, like on the idler right there. See, gotta get a fitting for that. Right, driver's side taken care of. Chassis greased. And Dalton's gonna help me knock out the spark plugs now. We'll probably do a compression check too, I think, and see how that looks. I don't know if you guys can see my shirt in this lighting, but completely drenched. It is just <laughs> scorching, sticky, hot out here. Missouri feels like home. It's only got like two minutes left on that SD card. I fill up two SD cards on this trip. Four, four out, yeah, I uh, know 128, oh. four hours. All eight plugs looked around the same, not bad, but they're old, so we're gonna just throw some new ones in and let's see what the compression's at. All right, 140, 140, 150, 140, 150, 145, 150 again. Beautiful, all right, yeah, 150. They got 140 to 150 PSI across the board, that's healthy. Got the new plugs gapped and installed. Let's listen to that crank. If you guys remember in the beginning, it kind of had like a galloping crank. That's a much healthier crank. So in the beginning, it must've just been maybe valve seat had some, some rust on there or uh, piston rings gunked up, but that sounds healthy now. No galloping indicating like a low compression cylinder or anything. Gonna go grab some shocks while the wheel's off. OE Spectrums made in USA. I don't see that too often from Napa. Damn. Some vice grips. This had some Montgomery Wards in it. And yeah, they're pretty, pretty beat. Bushings are shot too on them. That's one side done. I think I'll do the other side at the campground because Jen, well, she doesn't want to hang out here all day at the, the pole barn garage. Don't know why. <laughs> Don't know why. Why wouldn't she want to <laughs> hang out, right? Working on the uh, the rolled runner. Yeah. I mean, this thing's looking beautiful. Installing all the creature comforts. Craftsmanship like this doesn't exist these days <laughs> anymore. It's like, this is... We ended up checking into the Kansas City KOA. Got a nice little cabin. Lap of luxury tonight. Uh, I'm sure they won't mind me jacking this up and putting the rest of the shocks on it. Let's try to knock that out while Jen does her shower time and relaxation. Because you know, this is my relaxation time. Chilling with the Torino. These upper shock nuts have been soaking in PB Blast for a day, but they still, you know, if you ever taken these off when you go to turn it, it's just been in the entire shock tube. And sometimes you can get down there with a pair of vice grips to clamp that chrome shaft this shaft right here but in this case there's just no room to get in there at all so another method I've, I've used is if you have a strong enough ratchet you bend over if you're lucky it'll just break well the shock um, and not your ratchet and then as you're bending you turn it as well and that will will break it loose and that was uh, that was the case with this one so now it's coming off rolling up in style this guy <laughs> That thing's good looking. This is real KOA camping. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's incredible, yeah, isn't it? Freaking desert. Looks like it rolled out of Detroit yesterday. See that Missouri muscle? Oh yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Montgomery Ward. It sold everything from blue jeans to tires. She's a sports car now. And there we got all four new shocks thanks to Dalton pulling his 916th wrench, uh, ratcheting wrench out of the Corvette he happened to just have. Came in clutch. Later. Tell me this isn't weird here in Missouri. You want to go 70 west, you go there. And now we're just crossing over traffic. Feels like you're on the wrong side of the road. And if you want to get back over, you got to follow F, which shoots you back across traffic again. It's just such a weird intersection. 
but we're gonna we're gonna go left east. Cruising down I-70, doing 75 mile an hour. This baby's running smooth with the new shocks. AC's blowing cold. I think we got her dialed in pretty good. It's gonna be smooth sailing for the next sort of guy. It's actually only 1,065 miles to go till home. We'll probably break it up two or three days, take it easy, and hopefully the car doesn't give us any other issues. to go we have made it this this 74 grand torino elite has made the ride well taking us on a two-week vacation actually from las vegas back to eastern pennsylvania in the philadelphia area it's the final turn oh look at that long grass oh that's it we have made it home Gotta be just about 3,000 miles. We're at 78,332, but there was a 7% defect on that. So I'm plugged in the exact number of what it was right there. But, yep, she's made it back to Pennsylvania. Yeah. Woo! You with, the, this place? with the mid 90s California plates. Gus, this is your yard. <laughs> Gus, did you miss Turbo? Hey, Bob's, we haven't seen you in a couple weeks. He's like, oh, great, this dog's back. <laughs> Gonna deal with him. You come down those stairs? Oh, he's a. Come, come on. on, Gus. Come on, you're a man now. Come on. There he is. Now he can go. That's down. a good doxy. How about this long grass, Gus? Come on. <laughs> this is so long. It's like a foot. Well, guys, it's been about a month since our trip. Still got the car. Jen's actually been driving it. Uh, we, we registered it and shorted it in her name. She's been, you know, just using it as her uh, weekend cruiser. But I think we're not going to do any more work except for just got a, a tank for it. I'm going to put that in since she's been, you know, driving it. I want to make sure to keep her a little bit more safe than, than this thing. Uh, I did notice the spare tire blew out at some point. Look at that. No air, so that must have been pretty loud. It didn't happen when we were in the car, but with the sun beating on it through there, it probably just got really pressurized. Uh, I did go ahead and get a carburetor kit for it uh, for the for the motorcraft carb, and the power valve was blown out in there. Runs so much better with that now. Starts a lot better. Probably should have done that on the trip. They even had it in stock at AutoZone. And I think that wraps it up. Uh, like usual, thank you so much for sticking around this long. If you did, any feedback on the video or what you'd like to see more or less of, always really appreciate that when you drop it down below. Uh, we had so much fun doing this trip and I hope to do you know something similar like this in the future. Jen had a blast too. So if you have an old car that's been sitting around for a long time, you know, 70s, 60s, 70s that you think could use some TLC and maybe make a trek home, you know, shoot me an email on uh, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, you know, my emails in the about section too, all the usual places. And you know, not everything's a winner, but if you got something that you think would maybe work definitely uh, looking forward to doing more of these in the future trying to think of any last minute stuff guys i uh, might do another video on this car where we do the top and and detail it get all that sap off and clean it up but for now jen's kind of just driving it and enjoying it so we're not going to sell it just yet but if i do or we do it'll be in a you know on that announcement in a future video probably throw it on ebay or something if you got any idea on what you think the value is i imagine it's probably worth like four or five grand i don't know around there but anyway that was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. I could ramble all day, but hope to see you in the next one. And until next time, no nonsense, no how. Thanks for tuning in. See you then.